Today, we're going to sign two bills that help enhance the student experience. It provides students with even more resources uh, to be able to uh, help them through difficult times, make the most of their, their own lives, realize all their opportunities and dreams. So the first bill is House Bill 1317. And what that does is it authorizes school districts uh, to bring in patriotic organizations to come to their schools to encourage student participation and involvement. And, and these, these uh, groups are as follows. Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America, uh, Boy Scouts, Boys and Girls Club of America, Civil Air Patrol, Future Farmers of America, Girl Scouts, Little League Baseball, Marine Corps League, Navy SEAL Cadet Corps. And so uh, our view is, is bringing them in, uh, letting them come and make a pitch to students about why they should participate in Little League Baseball, why they should participate in Big Brothers Big Sisters, why they should participate in Future Farmers of America. We think that that's good. Uh, we think that that's good. Not everyone knows what's all out there in the community. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit numbing. A lot of times it's just word of mouth that maybe someone tells someone's mom, hey, they have this, they have that, and then you kind of go. Well, now you're going to have these, uh, these key groups be able to come in, talk about what they do, and, and, and ask the students uh, to participate. And I really believe that when you are in, engaged in uh, extracurricular activities, uh, athletics, some of these other things, uh, you know, that's going to be a net positive for these students. Uh, and it's really important that kids remain active. Uh, we, have, we see this where you have these devices, you have people that are, that are on computers a lot, a lot of times. Uh, we didn't have that when I was growing up. I mean, you know, we had video games, but you, know, you, you got outside, you did things, you were engaged in activities. I think that that's much better. So this really helps that. Uh, and I think sc students are better off being involved in any of these activities uh, than just going home and being on electronics for the rest of the day. So we're excited about this. I thank the legislature uh, for doing that. Now, if an organization comes, uh, because you know this is it's it's a free free state. We're not saying you have to be a part of any of this. Um, you know, districts have to notify parents when new organizations uh, come, and they should and they have the ability to give parents uh, the option to withdraw uh, consent from their child to participate. So you don't want your kid learning about little league baseball. They don't have to learn about little league baseball. That's up to you as the parent, and we think that that's the right way to do. So I'm excited to be able to sign this piece of legislation. I think it will make a, a positive impact, and I know it will benefit students who choose to participate. We're also signing House Bill 931. Uh, this establishes a statewide school chaplain program. Now. It's our view that bringing in, if school districts want to bring in uh, chaplains to offer voluntary services, uh, that, that they're within their rights to do so. But there's been a lot of confusion about that, about what is permitted and what's not. So this legislation it clarifies that, yes, school districts and charter schools have the authority to allow volunteer chaplains to be on campus to provide additional counseling and support to students. And you know, you got a lot of these problems that, that kids go through. You know, that there's some students where, you know, they, they need some, some soul craft. Uh, and that can make all the difference in the world. And so these chaplains uh, will be able to come and, and provide uh, services. Now, um, this is, again, similar to the other bill. Um, students can receive this support from chaplains. Um, if their parents uh, provide written consent for them to do so. So if the parents aren't interested in that, then, then, the, then the students don't have to uh, be involved in any, in any means. Um, districts that have volunteer chaplains at their schools uh, must have a list of all the chaplains on the district's website, including the chaplain's religious affiliations. Uh, and then parents can make judgments about whether uh, any of those fit uh, the needs that they think for, for, for their kids. But providing our students with more resources, I think, is better. And I think that this is going to go a long way. We had some districts who had been doing this. We had others that were worried about potential litigation. Uh, listen, you have a right to come and, and offer these services. It's totally voluntary for a parent or a student to participate. 
Uh, no one's being forced to do anything. But to exclude religious uh, groups from campus, that is discrimination. Uh, you're basically saying that, that God has no place. Uh, that's wrong. That's not what our founding fathers intended. So, so this is a good balance to be able to say, you know, um, yes, you know, Toho High School is not a, a Presbyterian school or a Baptist. It's, it doesn't have a religious affiliation. Like, we understand that. Uh, but if these students have the ability uh, to get mentorship, uh, to get counseling from faith leaders, that is something that they should have the right to pursue if that is what they want. And this bill ensures that. And I think it's going to make a positive impact on a lot of students throughout the state of Florida. Now, some have said that if you do uh, a school chaplain program, that somehow you're going to have uh, Satanists running around in all our schools. I just understand, we're not playing those games in Florida. Uh, that is not a religion. That is not qualifying to be able to participate uh, in this. So we're going to be using common sense uh, when it comes to this. So you don't have to worry about that. And I, to me, just as a, as a Navy veteran, I mean, I really view the chaplain program in school similar to how we have military chaplains. Uh, you would go and you'd have, and you know, you'd have different uh, types of chaplains. I mean, you know, we had Jewish rabbis, we had Catholic priests, you know, we had evangelical pastors. We had a whole bunch of different options that people could, could do and pursue. Many people in the military didn't pursue. Uh, many others did pursue, and that provides, I think, really useful resources uh, for that. We also had these chaplains. I mean, you know, when I was in Iraq, they're out there on the front lines um, out there. You know, you got, you got some of these priests, they're administering last rites to people who have been shot or been in an IED attack. Um, and so a lot of them, uh, you know, used very much uh, heroism as well. So that's something that always stuck with me. But I think that model... Of, of just having this uh, available as part of the services that you're providing, like we do in the military, we should be doing the same for our students here in school. And uh, I think so what we're doing, uh, I, I think the founding fathers would be thinking, yes, of course you should be doing that. I think that they would absolutely believe that this is uh, an indispensable part uh, of a good education. So, so we got to give students this option. We got to give parents uh, this option. And it really goes with our whole mantra of let's, let's empower parents and students to have uh, a wide range of options when it comes to their education.